The UK had a general election on the 12th of December 2019 and we're going to analyse a data set of the results. We're going to look at the turnout in each constituency, we're going to look at the percentage of spoiled ballots and we're going to look at which parties got the most votes and got the most seats. So let's get started. If you'd like to reproduce what we're showing on this video, the links to all the resources, the worked examples, uh, the data sets are in the description below. This data set is a public data set. It comes from the House of Commons Library and it's going to show the results by constituency. Let's have a look at it in Excel. <clears throat> what I've done is I've colored it into three areas. We'll talk about those areas and then we'll look at them in detail. There are 650 rows in this data set, one row for each constituency in the UK. The blue area on the left shows the static information about the constituency, what country and what region it's in and so forth. The green area shows uh, information specific to the election of 2019, the, the electorate at that time, the first party, the MP who was voted in. The orange area is basically the vote and we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's look at more detail. So if we come in and we have a look at, first of all, what we've got is, as I say, we've got the ONS ID, that's the unique identifier for the constituency, and then geographic information about it. And then we've got information about so this one, the MP voted in with Stephen Kinnock, uh, male, he was a Labour MP, and the Conservatives were the second, and it has uh, information useful information but we're going to use electorate, the number of voters, not necessarily those who did vote, of the 50,000 people who could have voted, 31,000 an odd cast a valid vote and 82 spoiled the ballots and Stephen Kinnock won with a majority of 10,490. The third section has got about 12 columns, one column for each of the major parties from here to here and that's the votes for the major parties and then um, if there were other parties all their votes are grouped together in this column. This is the only other data set that we'll be using, a small helper data set, one row for each of the parties together with the official colour, these things are hex codes and we're so used to seeing the parties with their colours, Conservative, Blue, Labour, Red and so on, that showing them in any other colours would be very confusing. I've launched Power BI and I'm going to import that data set. It's a CSV data set. It's this one, results by constituency. I'll transform the data to bring it into the query editor. And there we go. I'll also bring in that small helper table, which is an Excel file. It's my X selection lookup data and it's my party table. For reasons that's going to be more apparent later on, I'm going to rename this table base and I'm going to stop it from being brought into the model. That's okay. And I'm going to reference it and call that reference copy constituency. We're in the report pane and we can see our two tables here. If we look at constituency, we can see all the columns. What I'm going to do, first of all, is create a simple measure calculation that simply will count the number of constituencies. So I'm going to call it the number of constituencies and I'm going to say that it's equal to the count rows of my um, constituency table. There we go. And once I've got that, I can put that onto my report pane. It will create a bar chart with 650 constituencies and I can look at it for example by the country name. So we can see the split between England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. England has 533 constituencies. Now let's build a geographic hierarchy that we're going to use to good effect later on. I'm going to create a hierarchy starting with my country column. I'm going to rename it geography hierarchy and I'm going to add to that my region and then my county and then finally my constituency. I've made my column chart here a bit bigger. I'm going to change it into a bar chart 
and rather have country name I'm going to have geography hierarchy on my axis and this means that I can now use these drill down buttons here to drill into so I'm going to click on drill down drill into England and then I'm going to drill into the east when I look at my field list for the constituency table either here or in the model pane we can see we've got more than 30 columns which is a bit untidy so I'm going to uh, group them together in display folders roughly along the same lines as we did for the blue green and orange when we saw the spreadsheet I've selected the columns which are my kind of static constituency columns and I'm just going to give them a display folder called static so when I do that and when I come back and look at my constituency what I've got is I've got a display folder called static and there we have it I'll do the same for a couple more display folders one called votes and one called election here I've created my three folders if we have a look at election and static and votes I put the appropriate columns in them and if we have a look at it on the field list we can see they're in the three folders there now let's analyze the turnout that's the number of people who did actually vote the people the valid votes and the invalid votes those who actually went to the polling booth but spoiled their ballots over all the people who could actually vote the electorate before I'm going to do that I'm going to create a couple of measures that are going to make uh, other subsequent measures simpler so I'm going to go into uh, modeling I'm going to choose new measure and I'm going to create a measure called the number of valid votes and I'm simply going to say it's the sum of the valid votes and here we have it there I've also done the same for a couple of the measures invalid votes and electorate and now I've got those what I want to do is to hide the underlying numeric fields so if I come over here to my modeling pane I choose electorate invalid votes and valid votes those underlying fields and I set them to hidden now we've got the explicit measure we don't need to see the underlying fields so there they've disappeared from that why have we done that because what we want to do is now calculate the turnout and it makes it easier to do so so again if I go to creating a new measure what I'm going to say is I want my turnout I'll call it percent turnout because it is a percentage and I'm going to be say that it's equal to the uh, the valid votes and the invalid votes divided by the electorate let's see it I'm on a new page and I'm going to create a visualization a decomposition tree visualization to analyze our turnout so I put the decomposition tree on there I'm going to analyze our percentage turnout and I'm going to do it by our geography hierarchy so let's just click on that and obviously there is a hierarchy which is country first and then region and then constituency sorry county and finally constituency there we go let's improve this visual we're going to go conditional formatting and switch on the data bar color and choose advanced controls turnout varies from 50 percent to about 80 percent so what we'll do is we'll come along and say a minimum of 0.5 and we'll make that a, a kind of red color and we're going to say that there's a maximum of 0.8 again that's a blue color we'll say it's diverging and we'll say a, a value of 0.65 in the middle of those and we'll make that maybe well that's okay a yellow there and we'll click on OK now we have here a very nice visual for analyzing turnout for example we can go and look at Scotland and uh, go into there and see other constituencies the highest turnout 80% in Eastern Bartonshire where Joe Swinson lost her seat uh, we can go back into England and maybe go into Yorkshire click on that when it comes up and maybe have a look at Humberside which is low let's just improve the formatting some of those measures 
we're on percent turnout and really we'd like that to be a percentage format and we'll say actually just one decimal place is all right let's have a look at the votes which are all numbers in the thousands let's click all three of those and let's say that we want the thousand separators on there now if we go back to our visualization we can see that reads a lot better 75 percent rather than 0.705 We'll now do an analysis of the percentage of spoilt ballots in each constituency. That's the number of people who turned up at the polling booth but in some way didn't mark uh, their ballot correctly, usually indicative of some sort of dissatisfaction. So what we're going to do is first of all create a new measure and that new measure is going to be called spoilt ballots or the percentage of spoiled ballots and what we're going to say is that it is the number of invalid votes divided by the total number of votes which is invalid and valid. Let's format that as a percentage to one decimal place. I've created a table here and I'm going to add my percentage spoiled ballots by my constituency and I'll order it in by poll ballots. Charlie is the speaker's seat that's kind of understandable why it's got such a large thing. The average is 0.4% so maybe there's something going on in Leeds, North Leeds and South Derbyshire. What I'll do is I'll just have a look at the top 10 so I'll choose my constituency name I'll do my top 10 filtering by percentage of spoiled ballots. Now I've got a problem when it comes to showing the votes by party because those votes are split across all these different columns and I really need them to be in one column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into transform data. I'm going to create a new table called votes by simply taking a copy of base. Let me call that votes and the columns that I need in votes are the ONS ID and the other columns I need are all those columns for all the votes for each of the different parties. Let me just put them all in. A bit laborious. And once I've got that I can come along and I can say transform unpivot other columns apart from the ONS ID. I've got my attribute which I'm going to call my party and because I've uppercase them in my helper table, my dimension table, I'm going to do the same here and this now becomes my votes. And now those votes columns are in my votes table, I can simply remove them from my constituency table. We're in the modeling pane we can see that our constituency table no longer has those votes columns. We can see our new votes table and we can see that Power BI has already created those relationships correctly between the votes table and the two other tables. These two tables, constituency and party, are our dimension tables. They tell us something about, they describe the party and so on. The votes is a fact table. It tells us that there was an event, a vote for a particular party in a particular constituency. We're back in our report pane and we're looking at the uh, votes table here in the field list and I'm just going to create a new simple measure, an explicit measure called the number of votes and it's going to be equal to the sum of the underlying field votes dot votes. There we go. One last thing to tidy up before we do any visuals, we're just going to hide some of the fields we don't need and these ID fields here we're never going to put on a visualization. Uh, so I'll hide those. Again I'm going to hide them here. I don't need the party and the votes because I've already got it in the party field. I don't need the underlying votes field because I've done the calculation. So I come over here having selected those and hide them all. And if we go back and have a look at our votes table now we can see it's just got the votes there. The ONS ID has disappeared as well. Let's analyze the votes cast for each party. I'll choose my votes and on my party field I'll choose my party. We'll add the data labels to that so we can see 
and that's great. What we need to do now is to add those colors. The way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to go into data colors. I'm going to choose this formatting thing here and rather than on a color scale, I'm going to choose a field value and that field value is the color code that we brought in earlier on on this help table here, the official color. We'd also like to know the number of seats won by each party. And the best way of thinking of this is a, like a fact table, just like the votes table. We're helped in this in that we've got a first party column on our base table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference our base table. I'm going to call it our seats. And I'm just going to choose two columns from it. I'm just going to choose the ONS ID and the first party. And I'm just going to call this one party. So we're back in the report pane. We've got this new seats table and I'm going to create a new measure called the number of seats, very similar to the, the number of votes. There are a number of seats and again it's just the count of the seats table. And here we are, our new measure. One last tweak, uh, this relationship, Pabia has already put it in, but it's created, we can see this thing here, bidirectional relationship. We would like a single direction relationship so that constituency filters seats. And there we go, we can see the arrow pointing the way we want. And let's just hide these two columns here. Our next bar chart is going to show our number of seats again by our party. And we can see conservatives have 365 seats. Let's put the data labels on. And we'll also do the same thing with the data colors where we choose it so that it is a field value based on that particular hex code for the official color. A quick tidy of our model, we've got seats and votes and they both are in their own table. They don't really need to be there and what we can do is I'm just going to move them to the constituency table by clicking on the seats and then moving that in and we're doing the same on votes and clicking on votes and with the home table I'm saying it's going to the constituency table. So they're in there with the all the other measures and notice the votes and the seats table have disappeared since there's no measures or any fields there. Our final calculation is going to be the average number of votes it takes for each party to win one seat. So we're going to create a new measure and that measure is called the number of seats per vote and it's simply going to be, we can divide the number of votes by the number of seats. And once we've got that measure we can put it on a similar sort of bar chart here. We'll create a bar chart. Again, we'll use the, the party and with time we'll use our new measure of seats per vote. That's it for now. We're going to take this data set and extend it much further in future videos. For example, to previous elections, to an analysis of the MPs and bring in lots of socioeconomic data so we can do a really sophisticated analysis. I hope you'll join me for one of those. Thank you.